Hello and welcome to the refactoring part of the LiftPass refactoring kata. Um, so here we have written tests. So there's a simple test, here are some parameterized tests. Um, we don't want to go into this because that's a part of a, another uh, demo. Uh, but let's see what happens when we run those tests. These tests are actually hitting the REST API, so they're requesting a, a REST route. And we have also spun up a MySQL database in order for the application to run almost as in production. Um, so we can see here that what happens here is test coverage and it gets specifically interesting when we look at the application. We see that almost all lines are covered, except some, and they might actually be dead code. Um, it's important to see the whether our test suite tests everything. So if we run introduce a bug here, we want to make sure that all the some of the tests actually fail. So let's put the code back as it was, and we can see that the tests are. Uh, passing again. Now, the problem with this application is that uh, we do have one feature here um, that tells us what is the price for one lift pass, but we want to sell several lift passes at the same time, and we cannot reuse any of the code here. Um, this is all logic that calculates a single lift pass. We want to use the same rules, um, so we want to basically reuse all of this. We cannot, as um, once it's calculated, we just return it to in the response. So this application logic intermixed with HTTP stuff makes it non-reusable. We also can see that we have uh, access to the request object here. Uh, a bit all over the place actually. And finally we do have some SQL statements uh, all over the place which make this code very hard to unit test. Um, so the best thing here is to separate both the HTTP stuff from the logic and the SQL stuff from the actual application logic. That way it will be both reu be reusable and very easy to unit test. And it would be easy to implement the new feature using TDD. Well, how do we do that? Well, first, what we want to do is we want to create a part here where we actually get everything from the request that we want. Then, in this part, we just calculate one object that we can actually just send using res json. So at the very end here we wouldn't like to do res res json response. Right. So let's do that. Let's separate the HTTP stuff from the rest. So I'm extracting a variable here uh, which I'm going to call something like uh, lift pass type. And I want to check, make sure to put that at the top. Now I'm going to do the same thing here for the age. And that's all over the place. Uh, age is a good name. Let's put that up here. And what else is accessing the request? The rake query date. So let's extract that too. So that's probably a skiing date. Now, um, now we have isolated all access to the request. Let's close this piece of code here because that's not helping us really. Uh, what we want to do now is take care of this stuff. So instead of doing this in every kind of line, what we want to do is to just calculate the response and then 
um, and then send it at the end. Response and then I'm going to replace all these things with assigning that variable to response. So I'm selecting everything. Response equals and then that. Now it almost works. All we have to do is just send that back. And we can see that tests are green again. So we haven't broken anything. Now what we do have here is HTTP logic, HTTP, and here almost pure business logic. So now we can extract a method. I'm going to put that global and to say that calculate price. And we can see that this is clean from request response. Uh, in an ordinary application this is a controller and uh, we wanted to call a service object or something of the sort. So let's say that we have one on which we have the method calculate price. Now let's generate that class and let's put the function that we just extracted into that class. Let me fix the syntax and there we go. Now we have something more um, traditional. In in a service object here we would like to pass the connection here because that's not going to change every time and it's still very MySQL y. So let's create that constructor and assign that to a field of the price logic. Now that we've done that we can use it here and here. As we did that we can actually remove this one. So in effect we have moved the connection from here to here. Uh, so it's not very normal to do a new on the service object. What we want to do is extract a parameter and we want like to build it at the beginning of the application and then just inject it into the uh, route configuration. Now that we have this uh, object we want to extract it and not keep it in the controller of course so let's move that out to its own class. So nice. Um, now let's look at that controller. Uh, this controller looks exactly as I would expect a controller to look like. Um, the only thing that I really need to tend to right now is the internals of the calculate price. Here this is a big problem yet. So let's extract that too. We want to extract a method here first with um, something like find base price. And once we have extracted that we'd like to move that to uh, a DAO or data persistence object of some sort. And let's do that same thing here. So find find all holidays. Okay. And what we'd like to do is something like price DAO find base price like so let's create that field and let's pretend that we have an object here. And now we can this price DAO equals a no price DAO and let's pass it the connection.
Now we need that method on that object. Okay, works. Let's do the same thing. Okay, tests all work again. This is, of course, a class in its own right, so let's move that to DAO. And there we go. Now we have a real service object here, which is completely void of MySQL details and completely void of request and response objects. Of course, we're not quite finished yet, um, but what we do have here is we have something which is very easy to unit test. We can just mock the price DAO and, and off we go to test this logic. Of course, there's a lot of cleanup that we want to do here uh, regarding this procedural code and, and all these if statements here, which we're going to see in, in a second. But basically we have uh, made ourselves able to reuse the existing logic for the new feature and we're able to do the new feature in TDD because we have really testable code. There's one last thing we'd like to do it is to inject the price DAO. We don't want to build it without inside the, the service class. So let's do that. Uh, so I'm going to do the refactoring extract a parameter. Yeah, let's call it that. And let's remove this stuff, which is a bit long. Now, let's see if we can fix the code here. And we can see that the pass, pass again. Well, now we'd like to remove the connection because that's not used anymore, right? And fix the code on this side. And there we go again. We have uh, refactored into some rudimentary uh, dependency injection. So we inject the price DAO into the service object and we re-inject all of that into the routing configuration and the controller. So this controller looks like it should. The service object looks like it should, although it could be refactored. And the DAO is a real DAO. It's something like a layered architecture or some hex hexagonal architecture. Something that's easy to build with. Right, thank you for watching. See you soon for our next episode.